the away form is is not good. And um, you know, we, we, we thought that he was gonna rectify that when he came in. And if he's not doing that at the end of the season then for me, um we haven't got time to mess about. He has to go. Um, I, I he has to go. Yeah. At the end of the day you, you take three, four months Lampard, look what he's done. Um and I personally think if you can't win the league as a manager at PSG, you're just not up to it at Arsenal either. I think he got off to a decent start, but I think you see now it's not all it's, what it's meant to be. I think Rose on now, Wenger, he was he was the better manager. We shouldn't have got him out as quickly as we should have done, because now Emery's coming. He's I don't, you don't really know what he's doing. You don't know what team he's going to pick. And um, well, I think we should have been grateful for what we had when we had it. Right, let's talk about this then. We, we put a poll up asking whether Unai Emery is the right man for the job at Arsenal and you can see the results. I mean, that is pretty overwhelming. That's two thirds of people saying no. And in some ways I hate doing this sort of thing because, you know, this is a guy who's come over here. He's you do love doing this. I don't. He's come over here. He's doing his best. But it's just not happening. And what's interesting, if they'd have won that game against Sheffield United, they would have gone a point behind Manchester City in the Premier League. And there was no talk of a crisis here, mm. and quite rightly so. So it almost feels like this isn't just a results-based conversation, is it, that we're having about Arsenal. For whatever reason, it just doesn't feel right. What, what is the issue? For, for me, the issue's been going back for years. And I think you can, like, we, we talk, we've talked a lot about owners and recruitment and philosophy of clubs a lot over the last few weeks. And with Arsenal, you've got the, the, the two owners are sort of vying for who's in charge. So I think what happens is then there's a trickle down. And I think a problem for Arsenal, going back into the Wenger's regime, has always been recruitment. What have we said for years? We said it a couple of months ago on here. Years ago, they said it. And it's, it's, Arsenal need a strong centre half. Mm. They need a corner, someone in the midfield. They need a change of attitude. Right, they've gone to get David Luiz, you know, which which may or may not work out for them. I'm not sure. They got Ceballos, Se they got Pepe. They yeah. spent money. We all thought they had where, a good where summer. Did they, where did they need to spend the money? So say you take the Pepe money, 70 mil or something like that, the kid might come good, right? He's a very talented player. No doubt, he's a very good player. He might come good. But let's say, for instance, Gary Cahill's gone to, gone to Crystal Palace and he's been brilliant, right? Ooh. So he come into the, a good... A good, solid Premier League player who will know, be able to understand the game. So you're and saying you go this is more like, a culture, a more dressing room culture. Yeah, uh, no, no, I'm saying, no, no, I'm saying there is a dressing room culture problem there. I think, but my first thing first, I think recruitment from whoever's making the decisions there, the type of players they bring in, is so unbalanced. It's always been so unbalanced, and it hasn't changed under Emery. But the culture, that's another thing. We can get into that afterwards because, um, you know, you, you see like the, the ex-players like. Keown and that, that, that they're pulling out and they, they know what that dressing room was when it was like and then, and then but then you're getting players in the dressing room biting back sometimes when you're losing uh, and you're making mistakes like Xhaka you know as a centre half he's, he's making mistakes and things like when you're losing and, and you're getting stick in the media we've all had it you just have to just yeah. bite on it and just, just take it because around the corner there'll be good times and we'll all be praising you but I think they're very catty that the players Sometimes it feels to me that it can be very catty traditionally. That we and you hear Evra talk the other night saying about when he played Arsenal, he knew he was going to win, and they got the ump about that. But I that's don't his understand opinion. though how a dressing room I mean, can have this have a culture that goes on after season after season because the manager's different, the ownership structure is different, the players are different. How can you still be? How can we still be talking about a team without a spine or a backbone? Up? Well, they have issues. They've, they've, they've had issues under Arsene Wenger. I think Joe's right. The defence is, is, is not at the level. They finished fifth last year. You know, that's probably Arsenal's level. Are they better than uh, Manchester City and Liverpool? No, not in a million years. Are they better than Tottenham? No. They probably performed up to their level. Joe's right. It needed money. It needed uh, Allison and, and, and Van Dijk to go in there and solidify that defence. That front two, Aubameyang, Lacazette, that's, that's top draw. Mm. Ceballos in behind, that's really good. I agree with Joe. Pepe is a really good player. The young Saka, 18 years old. Brilliant. The midfield balance isn't right. Isn't right, whatever you say. They've got a lot of good players in that defence there, but the way it's put together, I don't really quite understand. David Luiz in a back three, he's brilliant. Mm. Probably one of the best passers of all, but you need two solid defenders next to him. Arsenal, their away form last year, was that 15th in the Premier League, four wins away. That, that, that's, that's unheard of. They conceded about 20 more goals than Liverpool Man City. So that tells you... They are way behind a team like Man City and Liverpool. They are fifth right now. That's their level. I don't understand why everybody's kicking off saying, yeah. we should be this, we should be that. That's their level right now until they go get a, a Van Dijk and an Allison to take the next step. Well, I think they're kicking off because they still have 
expectations that they probably should have because this is Arsenal Football Club and you've got a manager who comes in and claims he likes to play possession-based football and their possession stats are down on even on last season and they were down last season on Arsene Wenger. You've got a guy who still probably doesn't know his, his best 11. You've, you've got a manager who after the Watford game, one of his players comes out and says, we were scared. Yeah, but that can't... Arsenal Jay, saying we were Jay, scared after the Watford happen. game. And you know what? what? The fans are right to, to, to moan because there's been a lot of chop and change and you still don't really know the the best midfield. Um, the performance against Sheffield United was, was, was ridiculous for a team like Arsenal. So the fans are right, but really, it's going to take time to get it to the level that Liverpool and Manchester City have. And they did that through recruitment, spending money in key areas. You don't win anything without a, without a top-draw goalkeeper and a defence. The front of Arsenal... Well, I think their third highest scores this season. Mm. That's not that's not an issue for them. Mm. But still, defensively, and their away form is a huge issue. And until he addresses that, people are going to moan. Well, we can have a look at what happened in that game against Sheffield United. Um, and as we say, if they'd, have, if they'd have won this game, they would have been just a point behind Manchester City. The crux of this question is, is Unai Emery, having been there the amount of time he has been there, the man to still turn this around? It depends how much control he's got, Jake, because if he's got control over the recruitment, like a Jurgen Klopp had, yeah. then we can judge him in three years' time, did he get it right? You can't judge him after this short period of time. If he's bringing in the players and he's green line every sign and then um, he's, still in, he's still unbalanced so you the don't squad. think they should be better? with the players that they've got well, at the moment. Because Frank's had an impact really quickly. Yeah. Brendan Rodgers, we'll talk about Leicester later. Brendan's had an impact really yeah, quickly. Brilliant. Where's uh, the impact? Uh, where's, the, where's the improvement? Where's the sort of fundamental change under Emery? I just think, uh, for, for me, it's, I, I don't want to keep harking on about it, but it's going to come back to recruitment. I, it's, it's so, it's, Arsenal's an easy team to analyse. It's been the same for years and years. They can see, that goal they conceded against Sheffield United... That was just an organisation defensive. It was a bit milky. It's gone far post. It's mm. come back. And how many goals do we need to see Arsenal, you know, conceding like that before someone upstairs and goes, right, we need to scour the world for two top centre-halves, a goalkeeper The defenders they've got, though, are surely good enough to stop a goal like that going in. Well, obviously not, because they wouldn't. Are they being coached right then? Well, look, they all got to stick together, the coaches and the players, set pieces. Joe's right, you know, it's still an issue for that Arsenal team. Until you address those deficiencies, they're going to still have the same issues. And I think for Arsenal, it's not going to be a quick fix. And I think they want to be back to the Arsenal of all. But you think back to the defence that they had, the goalkeeper they had, the bouncing midfield, you know, the Petits and the Vieiras and the... Those guys were absolute destroyers. They don't have that anymore. Everything's too nice. Football isn't always so nice. Sometimes you need to grind out a result. And this Arsenal team, as good as they are going forward, they don't really grind out games. And that Sheffield United, you have to grind that out. Because Sheffield United, they out... There was just more effort on their side. When was the last time we see an Arsenal team not play well and win a game? And we say, whenever we talk about teams that win titles, say you've got to sometimes grind the result out and not win. Arsenal, sometimes it's beautiful to watch. You sit there at when home it's good, it's great, isn't with your it? cup of tea and they're popping it about and everything's going off and you're like, this is great, right? But then, if you're an Arsenal fan, you know equally next week they could go to Burnley and get done on two or three set pieces and it's the same story. So I can understand the frustrations of all Arsenal fans for what's going on. But um, unfortunately, I think until the absolute top part of the club is sorted out and there's some kind of plan that seems to be going in the right direction, you're still going to get the same results, they're still going to get the same performances and they'll still lose games that they should win. OK. Uh... Georgia East says, if Arsenal fans are OK to be in the top six and play in the Europa League, then Emery's the man for that. However, if they want to be a consistent top four Champions League club, they need to get rid. Tony, I was a big fan of his work at Sevilla, but look at Rodgers and Lampard and how quickly they've improved things. Arsenal don't look much better. Mystic Mems, Rodgers took over so many Rodgers comparisons and made them better already. Um, Torreira and Ozil have actually dropped a level, he says. Matt Stevens, he's 100% the right man. It took Klopp three years at Liverpool. Look where they are now. He just needs time. And Sean says half of the Emery and voters will be United, Chelsea and Tottenham fans. The other issue, it was mentioned very briefly there, is, is Mesut Ozil. I mean, that is something that has to be resolved. Just tell us how, how much of an impact it has on the players around when you've got a character as big as that. And we all know what he's earning and we all know what he's won and how great he's been, who is just basically completely out of the picture. How much does that impact on the players who are involved? Well, imagine. I mean, they only had one shot on target against Sheffield United. You know yeah. you're going to dominate possession. You could play him as a good yeah. 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 is you can, starved of service. You can play him in the hole and yeah. let him pick a killer pass. So... In certain games, you can play him. He obviously doesn't fancy him, I trust him, for whatever reason. But Mesut, in a team that functions with the bounce good, is mm. probably one of the best creators in the Premier League. So they need to be, be, be more open what the issue is. Because they're not talking about like it. This, no. yeah, I just think, uh, 
can he afford not to fancy him? Like, it's clear we can't doubt Mesut Ozil's ability from what he's done and what he's achieved in the game, right? The situation is what the situation is. Maybe they panicked and they give him a contract, reportedly 300 grand a week, right? To try and keep him, you know, and keep mm. him because they didn't want to lose him like they have done, right? Okay, so now all of a sudden they don't want to pay him 300 grand a week. So are they, are, is there someone upstairs like saying to, the gaffer, like, can we try and sell him? Can we try and sell him? Well, you're not going to sell and, him uh, if you're not, he's not playing. Get yeah, let exactly. him play, but let him be then, brilliant. Then, then it gets into a game of cat and mouse. Like, you know, Emery's yeah. like, he's not, he's not in favour with the owners. Um, if I can get him to, to throw his toys at the pram and maybe go and play for Galatasaray and Fedebacci, we get him off the wage bill. So really and truly, they just did an honest conversation. Ozil, his agent, the gaffer, the owners, right, come on, this is the situation. You've got three years left. Let's, let's get playing because Arsenal need him.